Darren Jack here from the Hall of Fame Collection. We're here at the Canadian International Auto Show this week. We get to sit down with Ross Braun, talk a little bit about his career, his time with Michael Schumacher, and some other special things too. So let's get into it. Jack here at the Canadian International Auto Show and we have a great guest with us today Mr. Ross Braun. Welcome Ross. Hi. Thanks for joining us. So let's get right into it. We want to actually talk a lot about your career Ross um, you spend a lot of time talking about modern F1 and stuff like that. You've been working in the industry for many years since the sort of mid mid 1970s with March um, but what was it like for Ross Braun growing up? Um, born in Lancashire, a great place to be born. And um, tell us a little bit about your introduction to racing. Well, um, my father was very keen on racing. He worked for Firestone uh, in the early years. Uh, that didn't involve racing, but he was a big race enthusiast. So my dad um, f was at the forefront of, of lots of things going on around that. I mean, for instance, when karting came into the UK, mm -hmm. he was one of the first to build a kart and go racing it. Wow. Um, and uh, also slot car racing was a big thing with my dad and, and I was involved in following him around and doing those sort of things. So um, I had that sort of passion for technology and engineering, even though it's pretty simple. Right. So those early carts my dad used to build and the slot cars we used to build and we used to travel all around the north racing these slot cars, which I started building myself. So. Um, by the time I started my apprenticeship, I was already into all that sort of stuff. Then my dad moved into racing with Firestone okay. uh, and started taking me to the races. So it kind of flowed from there. Yeah, absolutely. That's pretty special times growing up there with your father taking you to races. Yep. What was your first race that you attended? I can't remember, but I remember being in the paddock at some of the Formula 1 races. In those days, um, it was like an open paddock. Mm -hmm. I mean. You know, the guys were there prepping the cars out of the back of simple transporters. And there'd just be, you know, be a gravel paddock with the car there. And, um, you know, the drivers would be wandering around and it was obviously nothing like it is now. Yeah. Uh, but it would have been the UK races uh, because I wouldn't have traveled. Though my dad did travel, um, not only Formula One, but he did sports car races. Uh, he's got some cinema footage he took of places like Daytona and Sebring when he was abroad. Wow. So, um, yeah, I don't recall the exact race, but I remember it was vastly different than how it is now. Absolutely. And your introduction was at March, but, but shortly after you moved to the Williams team in 1978, obviously collected your first world championship with Alan Jones in 19, 1980, and then you got to work with him again in, uh, in the Haas Lola team in 85, 86. Talk us uh, through those days of working underneath Patrick Head and uh, and also Frank Williams. What was that experience well, like? Uh, my first job actually was for, for Patrick and Frank. Mm. So when I finished my apprenticeship, uh, I was halfway through uh, college and I dropped out to go and work for Patrick and Frank. And I worked for them for a year um, with a team called Wolf Racing. Mm -hmm. And that's actually when I was in the team that won its first race because we won uh, with Jody Schechter. And, um, Interestingly, Jody's become a very good friend and we still talk about those days when he got in the wolf and won that first race. Uh, so my first year was with Frank, then Frank lost the company, um, got ousted and I went to work for March for a year Okay. and then I went back to Frank, um, it would have been the late 70s and that's when the great era started of Williams Grand Prix Engineering. When I went back the second time, I was the 11th employee. Okay. And over seven years, we won two world championships and ended up employing 200 people. So it was a dramatic rise. And that's where Frank and Patrick mm -hmm. built the company. Yeah, you mentioned Frank Williams, some of the great folks and team principals that you've worked alongside, Jean Tart. You think of other figures such as Flavio Briatore, and of course your Ferrari years, your Benetton years. All of those years combined with Mercedes too and Braun Grand Prix, Nick Fry. What do you take from those experiences and those, and those figures 
as far as the good and the bad of seeing some of the things that they do politically and the way they conduct themselves and how did you apply that to being the Ross Braun of, of your sort of Formula One era? Um, I don't know if you consciously take on board all those things but of course you're exposed to them and you know what you see works and what you think well I wouldn't do that <laughs> uh, and, and they were all very different I mean Flavio was a very flamboyant personality very active on the political and marketing front didn't really know anything about racing cars. Okay. Um, Frank was different. He he was pretty savvy on the commercial side, but he was a real enthusiast and drove himself in the early days. Uh, so he had a real passion for racing, and that's all Frank wanted to do. Fabio was part of a lifestyle, uh, so that was very different. And they had their own ways of achieving things, and. Um, yeah, you know, it all rubs off. You see how they operate. You you see the things that you know you think are great, things you think, well, I wouldn't do it that way. And I guess that builds in you, your experience. Biggest influence on me in my early career was Patrick Head because I worked for him. Uh, he was uh, probably the prominent engineer of that era. And I learned a lot from his standards and his approach and uh, his logic and, and I think that was one of the formative periods of my career. Yeah, absolutely. One of the gentlemen's names that I missed out there was Tom Wilkinshaw. Of course, you got to work with Tom in Formula One through Benetton, but also in uh, 1989, you made a move to, to go work for the Jaguar team on the World Sports Car Championship. What a great era that was. I think back to 1988 when Jaguar won Le Mans. Mm. And um, just talk us through that experience. You won, a, won Le Mans yourself in 1990 as part of that team. And then of course the 1991 World Sports Car Championship. Um, tell us a little bit about what the years were like well, with I'd, Jag. I'd, um, I wouldn't say disillusioned. I'd become a little frustrated with Formula One. I was working for Arrows and the years I worked for them for three years and I was the technical director and the beginning of each year would start great. We'd be up there and maybe um, scoring points and getting on podiums and then the money would run out. Okay. And so by halfway through the year, it was, it was uh, pull up the drawbridge and no money to be spent. And that was pretty frustrating. And during that period, Frank, uh, uh, Tom rather, persuaded me that uh, if I came and did Jaguar with him for a couple of years. The plan was to take Jaguar into Formula One. Okay. That was the master plan. And so I did the Jaguar sports car, the XGR14, mm -hmm. and we won the championship. I did some work on the V12 uh, car they had, and we won them all. So it was a great period for me. And then things took a slight, slightly different turn, and the Benetton Formula One team became available. So Tom got involved in that, and I became the technical director there. And that's where I started working with Michael Schumacher, that's of course. That's right. So yeah. that, uh, and I got to know Michael in sports car racing. With Mercedes and, yeah. and during so, that period, he was very So fast. Tom and I knew Michael far better than anyone else in mm -hmm. Formula One. Yeah. So when we saw there was a chance of him coming into Formula One, we grabbed him. We had a race with Jordan, uh, but we basically got our hooks into him, mm -hmm. got him in the Benetton team. You mentioned Michael Schumacher, that 91 drive that he had with, with the Jordan team at Spa. I was there uh, 11 years old. Um, I bought a program, showed up with my family and went into the, uh, the pit lane, first time at Spa. I run across Roberto Moreno and uh, I've got a picture of me and Roberto next to his car, he signed my program. We, we wandered over to uh, the Jordan garage and we see this other driver that nobody had heard of, Mr. Michael Schumacher. Well, he signed my program too, so when it comes to collecting, I've got his first F1 autograph. Well done. Well done. But uh, I just want to touch on that briefly because um, working with Michael Schumacher, that was pretty important for you. Um, during that weekend, you probably had an eye on him of how fast he was going and probably instrumental in convincing Flavio to bring him over. Yeah, I mean, Flavio didn't know Michael, so um, I think we'd started work on that before he even got in the, the Jordan. I mean, we, we were slightly slow in understanding he was coming into Formula One, but once we knew he was coming into Formula One, Tom set to work to try and get him. And so even before he, he showed his talent at Spa, uh, we knew he was pretty special. Yeah. Certainly in sports car racing, I think he was just, like, clearly the strongest driver in sports car racing. And uh, so we were already on the case when he appeared at Spa, and then he, he really just reconfirmed 
uh, our expectations and sus suspicions that he yeah. was pretty special. Yeah, you had um, you were part of Michael's team really for all but three of his Grand Prix victories, and those those special years through Benetton there through his two World Championships, um, you didn't get to be a part of it with um, Ferrari in 1996. But from 97 on to 2006, you were a large part of his success. And um, uh, lastly, he came into the Mercedes team in 2010, and that was probably a lot due, due to your relationship too, wasn't it? It was, and um, I think sometimes, you know, you're, you're fortunate to, to find someone you can work with, or, uh, and, and there's a synergy, there's a, an understanding. And I think with Michael, I can't remember ever falling out with Michael in the whole period we worked together. And I think we trusted each other. We weren't, clearly we weren't always right all the time, but we forget, forgave our mistakes. Uh, and it was a pretty special, pretty special period. And, um, and you're right, he came back to Mercedes at my persuasion. Um, I think what was, you know, I think people thought he'd gone off the boil a little bit, but then when you saw the speed of Nico Rosberg, mm, then I think you make that comparison and actually he was still doing pretty well. And I remember his pole position in Monaco uh, that showed he still had the talent. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. And um, just to finish up there, I just want to do a quick rapid fire round. I'm going to mention a driver's name and tell me what comes to mind. Lewis Hamilton. Special. Nico Rosberg. Not quite so special. Rubens Barrichello. Uh, great guy, great guy. I've enjoyed working with him a huge amount. Martin Brundle. Uh, very good friend. Eddie Cheever. Uh, quite a character. And Alan Jones. <laughs> tough, tough Aussie. And Ross Braun. Ah, the story's not finished yet. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we're pleased about that and uh, we wish you okay. all the best success. Thanks, Thanks for Cheers. taking the time to join us. Sorry, I could go on all day and I could go for hours, so it's, this is a very hard one. You know,